Okay, welcome everyone. Let's will start. Uh, today lesson will go through LO4 learning outcome for be able to design monitoring and control mechanism for a project. Good afternoon and uh, let's will start. So anybody any question before starting this session? If you have any question you can ask. Okay. Uh, please check your mic. Hope so you can hear. Because it seems from my end, it seems okay. I hope, I hope you know you can hear me now. So let's will start. Welcome. So today lesson will go through LO4. So we have a key command verb today. What we supposed to evaluate. So you should be well aware of what is meant by evaluate. Make the qualitative judgment design. We discuss it mean plan, develop. Yes, so progress, expand, utilize. If these command words will come and we need to be well aware of. To the lesson in inductive contents, we have project uh, creep gaps in accountability challenges dependencies uh, functional constraint constraint mean limitations we have uh, what sort of limitations can be in we are normally constrained in financial in money we are constrained in term of the labor we are constrained in term of material <clears throat> so these three M's can be constrained. We have a limit on it. We have to prioritize it. We have to monitor the progress and utilization of these resources. And then documentation is very important to make our project successful. So lesson one, two, and three, we already discuss about the, we discuss what is a project. We discuss about project technique. We discuss about the project. Last lesson, we, Last lesson we discuss about the project. Um, so last lesson we discuss about the project um, uh, communication and why communication is important. And we discuss about the stakeholders. So that was the last lesson. Welcome, Hamza. Can you hear me now? Okay. You have to click. You know, uh, through either you listening through computer or through your mobile if you're on mobile. Eh? So you have to click here. You have to pick it the option then hope so you can hear me. Eh? Okay, let's will start. So please you can rate yourself always good to be when we'll start any activity. You can rate yourself scale one to ten grant your knowledge about project management. So where we are. We are on six, we are on seven. So always good to be when you st we start any activity, it's good to be do some reflection where we are in term of our current knowledge about the project management. What do you think Hamza, where we are? Can you hear me? Okay, let's full start. <clears throat> okay, so we need to be make sure. Um, so 
so always you know as i mentioned you make sure you know you scale yourself 1 to 10 you know your current knowledge about uh, the topic so let's will start now we have assessment criteria 1 4.1 which is evaluate the risk what is the risk so what do you think risk risk is probability as we discussed in the last lesson as well risk is a probability of happening probability of happening something yes or we can say risk is a chance risk can be positive okay hamza sorry i don't know the reason why you can't hear it can you hear me hello can you hear me now yes samjha this is this is the hike in which i'm talking about this one so this is the little button here i hope so you can see now and this one you have to click here it give you option okay that's the way we need to okay so let's please uh, we'll go through 4.1 is as we earlier mentioned risk and contingency uh, contingent planning so what is a contingent do we know what is a contingent contingent plan is mean second plan yes is emergency plan we can say so you have a contingency plan in case of risk in case of emergencies what are the contingencies plan can be let's say you know if we not get the raw material from from the current supplier so do we have do we have second plan which we call contingent plan for this yes or if we can't you know the labor uh, we can't find the person do we have a uh with the recruitment agencies recruitment agencies are contract so we need to be look around all these you know uh type of contingencies can be risk and contingencies may or the project depends on the external circumstances what are external circumstances think about these are external so you learn about couple of you political economics social and technological these are all the external factor and these factor is our contingency these can be put ourselves at risk our project so we need to be look around if with economic situation and how we can address it if we bank not give us loan what will be second plan okay legislation could affect activities perhaps legislation yes political parties change the legislation and the legislation can affect as well social environment people stay yes due to the society's change if the project sponsor know from the start you may be change the method working to keep in line with the new legislation like you know we have a gdpr gdpr which is called general data protection regulations it was 1998 before now we have a 2018 yes so new legislation like if you go on any website is cookies coming and you can really you know because that's you know the electronic data thing so we that's we need to be make sure we have a contingency plan in place okay prospective and immig uh, immigrant approach so prospective rather the strategy or the theory there are the two basic ways to looking how the project process work there is the traditional planned approach one a hint at by using the word like risk uncertainty and emerge because there is a no process can really fully plan as the project tend to be fluctuate one way and other way through their life cycle life cycle of the project which we discussed in the lesson 1 so 
away of the flexibility demands in the project team. You don't have to adopt either plan or immigrant approaches. So what we need to be look around much better to be both and when they need it. So we need to be carry on dynamic. Dynamic means change. The things change your, let's say national minimum wage change. So we need to be make sure, we need to be make sure we'll carry on changing. So phase one of the project, for suppose phase two, phase three, phase four, five. So whatever the phases can be. So if we look here, phase one, Yes, conceptual conception and definition of what really you define the objective of the project. Second phase, your planning and scheduling. You plan and schedule your work, plan the work and communicate the plan with the, if you have a problem, look around, communicate with your take on board. Phase three, yes, executing. Now you start the progress and start working, measure the progress. Phase four, where you can look around the problem, monitoring and review. Thus, you know, hand over dates. All this we need to be look around. Any step we have a risk, you know, so we have to be evaluate these risks. So then we have a, this activity. Maybe we can look around, make an assessment the way normally run the project in organization in term plan. And they be the emergency approaches. So identify the key area in the project process plan more thoroughly in the future and some areas maybe. So area of improvement, maybe we need a HR, maybe we need to think about the marketing, maybe we need to think about the recruitment, maybe we need to be area of improvement, deliver more dynamic and, and approach it. So we can look around maybe recruitment internally, externally, risk management, risk register, source of supply, outsourcing, all these different approaches, different, you know, uh, uh, the way we can. So next we have a project. Smart activities. So let's will you can copy this link, please. And you can look around. So you can start this. It's quite good to do activities. Okay, you can chat Hamza if we need to. This is uh, quite good. What is the project name? Let's say your construction project. We have phase one. You want to complete your project manager. Let's say Hamza is a project manager for this project and then we can start it, yes? So strong case, what you can, a strong business case. We have agree this, yes? So what we can, the project is in line with the organization strategy. You can look around, yes. So what you can look around, I have fully support the senior management. Yes, so you can look around. Uh, the benefit of the project is understood and documented neutral, yes. I don't want to say because I'm not aware of. Clearly set up delivery dates and identify, yes, I agreed. Yes, so you have to look around the customer understand the project here yeah? so you need to look around critical success factor what is the critical success factor csf so critical success factor any customer surveys are in nhs is really you know your client be satisfied so we'll say yes and uh, let's say you know these all you can do it and you can plan it yes project smart so that is quite good these question we have to ask and uh, please you can do this you know activities as as I mentioned, Okay, let's will. So this is this is quite good activities, guys. Please make sure you uh, you will do this activity. So risk assessment. So project risk is the combination of the probability of the likelihood, uh, likelihood and adverse events and happening. So we need to be look around the consequences and impact. Risk assessment of the project is the process 
for identifying the risk, assess the risk, and we need to be look around because, so first thing, identifying the risk. So there are the number of different ways you can look around the risk. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, so encounter the project. For example, you can look at the potential risk with the different project. We can look around including planning, implementation, and control. We can look around the stakeholders and the resources need. Resources normally required for the project is money and material and information and tools. Good starting point is the milestone of the project. You can look around what those are according to the plumber noted that the, in their experience, the sources of the project risk engineering and construction project, changing in the scope and the acquisition, performance design errors can be omissions, inadequate define the role and responsibilities, inaccurate costs, and the cost can be actually higher than uh, technology and the performance can be time cost and quality, there can be big issues. So you have to got your milestone plan in play that will help you to minimize the risk, you know. So at this stage, you have to look around. Then second, uh, assess the risk level. So you can as always do the risk level assess it. So there is a one called REC approach. REC is called red, umber, and green. So red, umber, and green. So you can look around the risk is high, low, medium. Yes. So you will see here risk can be quantified, risk can be quality, qualified is a high, low, medium. And you can give the number is high is five and one and is, is it five, is it low or high. So you have to be do this, you know, that will help you to be identify and address this and minimize the risk. Second, then next we can look around. This is a risk register. So we need to be in our organization. We can look around the risk. We can identify the risk and mitigation plan, the strategies to mit, uh, minimize. So what we can do, we can get the insurance to minimize the risk. Yes. Or we can make the joint venture, joint venture with the different companies, or we can do partnership because we don't want our own fund, everything will be waste, you know. So if we the high risk area, we don't expertise, we are entering into a broad and where is the project, we're not aware of the local culture, culture means norms, values, because different last lesson we discuss about cultures as well in detail. So that's, you know, we need to, the way we need to be minimized the risk. Next, we're looking 4.2. Is the system and the mayor, the monitor, and appraise the status and the progress of the project. So, depending on the type and the size of the project, there may be many types of the estimates. So, according to the one scholar Turner, he gave the following informative example of the system project to show the sequence and the estimate throughout the project phase. We need to note how the accuracy of the project improve next, you know, so we can look around. You have a proposal, so range of accuracy is a 50% or more. When the prepared is concept, appraise the viability when you start any project, yes? Budget, you can look around plus and minus. It can go 20% up and down because due to the things, inflation and the price always change, you know, like the national minimum wage, anything happen and that's, you know, impact. Sanction, if we have, that can be 10% more and less. You can appraise, control, you know, so you need to look around if need to be increased 5% or not, maybe the progress, tender, yes, design and the prepare the tender. So that's, you know, you need to be make sure we have some sort of, you know, in a project planning perspective and that will help, you know, to be reduce the risk. <clears throat> okay, type of cost. Okay, so one of the lesson we already explained. So type of cost can be variable cost, the cost which change with the level of output, such as material labor, thus cost, fixed cost is a rent, salary can be fixed cost, 
opportunity cost if you taking this opportunity you missing other opportunity the missing opportunity is cost to you as well you attending the lesson actually you doing activity so activity you missing the opportunity to earn the money so that's you need to be that's the opportunity cost which you forgive for gone so we need to be make sure you know we have to be calculate the demand and supply we always need to be keep in mind that before you estimate the cost adequate you need to be understand the type of the cost of the project you cost component so you have to be identify the types of the cost through may use them all in the one project labor how many men hours will be needed yes for the project material how much is required physical resources all this you need to be you need to be make sure the cost okay tangible intangible you need to be think about the vat you need to keep in mind the inflation you have a contingency plan for it you can look around 5 to 10% more you have a spare cash for it and this may be built into our 10% in fluctuation in the time you know hand over the project and you have to be do the planning every so if you need to be hand over the building or any other construction project especially so you need to be make sure because there can be a damages if we don't fulfill <clears throat> okay then the project control system uh is the is the total approach of to monitoring assessing and correcting based on the performance criteria compare should be happen the forecast and actual result so there can be a variance assess the difference variance why we have we said you know the labor will cost us 100000 why the labor cost us 150000 why 50000 is more is due to the poorly manage your staff or as a manager you not really monitoring appropriate corrections we need to be look around get you know back on track young provided the diagram which is one of the authors so we can look around the project plan we can look around update your project document and you i have to follow the budgeted and actual result that's you know is quite crucial and we can do in the project management perspective that will help to reduce the risk okay next we looking the project control system it is holistic approach you should monitor and control all the phases of the project yes initially planning and specification state it is ongoing you should be doing and knowledge based on the collect data so data become information is become your knowledge so you need to be look around the area of project control so you need to be good control in place you need to be create delivery dates yes you need to be look around those gar criteria and quality you need to look around the cost you need to look around the time risk risk is under control if you have a high risk people are sitting and of course you can't really fulfill and achieve the objective of the project <clears throat> okay next we have uh, we discuss about smart objective smart is measurable so measure and the method of control so you need to look around the key deliveries set objective this is a good example we can look around the work what task you have what method of control you will use cost so forecast and cost plan budget cash flows time yes so always you have a milestone you have a gain chart people when you manage so you have a job description you have the stakeholder map you have all these things you know for control risk when you do that you can look around the likelihood you have a contingency plan you have a risk registered you lock it you assess it you track the risk yes that's the crucial to be risk management perspective so financial indicators of the project so you can look around the cost of the new equipment you look around the training cost you look around the other cost you look around the benefit so that's crucial so today we will go through in npv this is the investment appraisal method net present value the project what you invest what you get back that's you know the real value of the money the pound we have today is more value than the pound will get in future internal rate of return always a higher is a better npp is a positive if you accept the project other we can look around the payback period as well okay this is all about and that's also help you know to monitor the risk of the project so next we looking now payback period payback period is calculate how long the project will take you know initial investment so like you know the project what you invest it takes us 5 years to recover what you invest this uh, you spend 100 million or 100000 so how long 100000 will 
the outflow is a hundred thousand inflow let's say first year you have a fifteen thousand second year you have twenty five so how long will it takes you to cover your hundred thousand this is a easy method but this method don't consider the time value of money because the you get you know what you invest in five years but what will be afterwards what will the value of that money in if you get it so like here is an example of if you look here we are investing 3100 and we are getting 1900 800 so this is a cumulative mean total so 31 we invested that the outflow is in bracket the money went out from the business 1000 you get back 2100 left then you get 9 12 left then you got 8 4 left so 4 left so you need to be so this project will take one two three years and some months because the, in the year four we are getting 500 pound back so we, we can't say the full four years it's less than four years so we can say three years and some months outstanding amount divided by the following year inflow and times by 12. so this we solve here and we have a 10 months so three years and 10 months this project will take so you know to recover so we can compare with other project option and to be fine you know which one is the best for us okay then we have a discounted cash flow discounted cash flow mean the money we have because it's depreciated so we are, we want to be find the real value of the money so that's why the crucial we can look around the real value of the money of the project so we can use the approach is called npv net present value net present value is the up is a positive you accept the project if the npv will come negative you reject the project so net present value is taking in account the time value of money it's a look the return of today in term it has the advantage it's considered time value of money is looking the real cash flows uh it's what is the more difficult and uh, it can be arbitrary because you know that and we have a formula to calculate the known uh it's a discount factor one our one plus r r is a discount factor you can set 10 percent let's say you know you have a value of the money inflation is let's say inflation is 12 percent if you deposit money in the bank you will bank will give you three percent so that makes 15 percent so if you're getting your that you depreciate what you get the money on 15 percent if you getting your year come after the depreciation your positive figures still so you can accept the project that's all about which we'll go through so if you want to calculate your self discount factor one divided by one plus 0 0.1 so which will go through i'll show you in the further slide so like here we are looking on 10 percent so if we'll say one divided by 10 percent means 0 0.1 yes so one divided by 1.1 so you will get 0 0.09 first year whatever answer will come you carry on dividing by one point it's mean depreciating so one pound today is a one pound in the year zero in the current year we invested twenty thousand will 20,000 present value will be 20,000 because that's the negative is the outflow the money we invested we're getting 5,000 pound back and actually 5,000 pound value every one pound value will be 91 pence approximately after one year because it's a depreciation reduce the real value of money so if you're getting 5,000 actually real the worth of the money is 4,545 pound worth of the goods you can buy now in the year before you can buy the 5,000 pounds so there is a depreciation due to the inflation the value of the money is dropped so 7,000 and then if yes, so same way if you add all these positive minus negative if you're positive more you accept the project otherwise you reject the project so in this case we can reject five uh six ten and that makes sixteen thousand seventeen thousand so it's not twenty so we invested twenty we get in seventeen so there is a negative npv so npv mean net present value so this is the present value and you do net in and out you know the flows that's the way we can next we have a method is called accounting rate of return one of the investment appraisal is a formula average profit divided by initial investment so we can look around here we have a three project handover bristol and carlisle so we investing four million four million a and b so we are getting one million back in five years we got five million we invested four one million is the profit one million divided by five because the five years we're getting 0 0.2 which is average profit 0 0.2 million divided by four million times by 100 we're getting five percent 
So in A and B, we're getting 5%. If we have a two option of the project, so if you look here, we're getting 1 million, 1 million constant, but in the project B, we're getting higher in the first two years and then lower in the following year. So that's why, but it's overall is a 5%, but still B is a better than A because we are getting more cash in initially. So we can reinvest that and we can look around the compound interest. Okay, so Carlisle, if this project required 5 million, we don't get in the year one nothing, but year two will get 0.5. This is inflow, the money will come. Average will get the profit two divided by five will get 0 0.4, 0 0.4 divided by five times by 100. So we'll get around 8%. And so project C is a better, but because project C will give us 8% return and other project will give five, but it's required 5 million. If you don't have a 5 million to invest, you will go for the project A or B and B is better than A. Okay, next we're looking now a uh, develop uh, contingency plan to help you know mitigate the potential delays so when you do the project documentation is work the main point should be centralized system you need to be your schedule and the cost need to be break down you need to be look around the logs and analyze the reports and so on so you need to be look around the specific and will be facilitate this final review and close so you need to be make sure we'll go through and then uh actual again the forecast so you find the variance yes that will help you to provide so that's the way we need to be look around the uh contingency and the document we should prepare other we can this is the all we need to be risk identification we need to be look around the risk impact we need to draw the document for it the risk prioritization high low medium then we need the risk risk mitigation planning implementation and progress monitoring and risk tracking we need to be all this we have to do that will help you know to be achieve the project objective uh, so contingent plan a contingent plan is a plan is like uh, any plan it's required the detailed research and brainstorming uh, and like you know the good plan have a steps identify and prioritize the resources what the key risk we have you look around high low medium and draw the contingent plan that will be in case of the risk what we can do and how we can tackle it and uh, address you know the then you can what you can do in contingent plan share the plan with your revisit the plan and contingent plan is a risk management and the project management is a crucial documents that's you know we have to look around to make our project successful that is one of the key things you know like in the past northern rock one of the bank which is dissolved in range rover is one of you know the uk companies take over so we need to be continued reviewed where we are not we reach at the last minute well, sorry we are going to be So we need to be make sure we'll do so. Okay, guys, this is the quite good case study to be look around assess a major infrastructure project. Just make please make sure uh, to read. We have a video about the contingent planning, and uh, please you can copy this link and you can watch and uh, like yes, I can show you and that is good to be watched. That will help us to be. Uh, or develop better understanding about. So that, that's you look around. Yes. So welcome. So that's we need to be look around. This is a contingency planning. What is a contingent plan and how we can. So that's, you know, please. So it's good to be watched this and uh, develop your understanding about contingent planning, how we can do. So that's we need to be look around. And then we have a. Uh, uh it's a little quiz please you can do and i refer you know the contingent planning as a reference you can read you know a little bit about more about the contingent planning so that's all today lesson today lesson we cover our lo4 learning outcome four and the next lesson will go through lo5 and six and if you have in between any question anyone please feel free to drop me email and i hope so i'll speak you all during our next lesson make sure you know please attend so we have a healthy discussion in during our lesson Thanks for listening and attending. Hope so. I'll speak to you all during our next lesson. Thank you. Bye-bye.